Yes, thanks for staying with us on the Sports Show. Time to talk SANFL. We bring in the genius, Luke Marchioro. Genius. He joins us. Luke, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Mate, let's talk about Port and Central. Just before we came on, mate, you said that uh, Georgie Artis was the difference down there in a 17-point win to Port Adelaide. Was it a land of the Giants? Well, Port picked, I think they had eight or nine blokes over 192 centimetres. So in that forward line, they played uh, young debutant Tickle from the mid-season draft, Vizantini, Lord and Georgiades, and probably too much for um, Centrals in the end. Georgiades was clearly the best player on the ground and the difference between the two sides in the end. They, it was, I think, out of the uh, 11 or 12 goals they kicked, Port Adelaide, there was only one kicked by a, a, a midfielder. The rest of them were kicked by... The guys yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, Tegel kicked three, Vizantini Vicente. kicked two. That was the difference in the game. Yeah. You know, when Central's got the ball on the ground and they were able to run the ball out of the back half and yeah. those Port blokes couldn't go with them, the Central kicked those three goals before halftime got themselves back in the game. Yeah. When that slipped in the second half, when Port slowed the game down, were able to use that aerial dominance, they controlled the game, controlled the territory, and they were able to win the game from there. What do you think of the new bloke, mate? The mid-season draft Port picked up Bryn Tickle, the big uh, big fella. He's about 208 centimetres, though. He's, he's 203, so he's a big boy. 203, is he? So yeah. he it was, was a weird game. There wasn't a ton of stoppages, so you couldn't mm. get to see a lot of opportunities in the ruck, especially yeah. with Hayes playing as well. Um, but was good up forward, made the most of his opportunities, sort of faded out of it a little bit, but he's learning new structures and was actually quite good for that team on the weekend. But yeah. plays a bit like Pete Latham, so maybe filling one hole with one they sent away in the off-season. I thought that when he did... Poke his head in the ruck, Tico. I thought he was good. I thought, wow, well, hang on, this guy can play a bit. He got his hands on the ball quite a lot. Yeah, there was this guy, goal he got out from a centre bounce as well, where he tapped the ball to ground and then ended up and then ran forward as well, I think, yeah. in the second quarter. He third. just looked. Okay. knew what's going on. He's 22. He's played a lot of waffle footy. So it's not like he's new to the level. It's not like an 18-year-old kid coming up and playing against men. Yeah. He's done that already. So I think that there's a little bit in that for Port, but his development's probably a little bit fast-tracked in terms of what some of these other 18, 19-year-olds might be. Yeah, sure. Mate, there's always that uh, argument. Do you play on Monday, on uh, Queen's birthday? Glenelg, yeah. 4,500 fans of the game. They were just in devastating form against her. I mean, 67 points. I think most people going to the game would have gone... This could go either way. Yeah. I think we said that last week, didn't we? Stirred off a great yeah. win against the Crows too, yeah. but Liam McBean back for Glenelg makes a massive difference to that structure and the way they play. Kick four on the weekend, but just frees up their other players. It takes a defender off of Reynolds and puts him onto the second or the third, and the same with Hosey. And when he plays, they just look so much more dynamic in that forward line. They don't look so... They look very dynamic, creates opportunities for other guys. And, you know, the, well, most of the stats were even, but Glenelg was so efficient going forward. And they actually got some goals out of their midfield for, on the weekend as well. Partington kicked two, Lions kicked one. And that's something that they've sort of lacked in the last few weeks as well. You know, we, we talked about Sturt, and we, we, we said that they're a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde team mm. when, last week. I thought, well, you know, they've had some good wins, and then, oh, hang on, they're a bit disappointing there. And then, oh, well, they poked their head up again. I think they beat Adelaide, did they? Beat, beat the Crows the week before, yep. Yeah. So, you know, they've shown some good footy. And then, you know, I, I remember talking to you last week about it and thinking, OK, Sturt, are, you know, they're, they're playing OK, but they're a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. Well, Jekyll and Hyde isn't the story. They got murdered. <laughs> they have. And, look, three of the last four now, they've been really touched up as well, been touched yeah. up by North as well a few weeks ago. So, you know, they've got some... And the, and the Eagles as well got them too. So there's a few question marks now over their midfield group and whether it's deep enough there without Tom Lewis and that yeah. as well. So they've got some real questions to ask. They've got a week off this week and they'll have to go away and sort of reassess. They were the, the form team in the second half of last year. Yeah. So whether the break they can reset and get going, but it will be a lot, lot to be determined there. I, I reckon it's that kind of season, though. If you don't bring your best game... I mean, you can, sometimes you can... You hear it all the time. You've oh, got to bring your best game to win, but sometimes you don't. Yeah. But in this season in the SANFL, if you don't bring your best game, okay. you're in trouble. And no. South and North are probably that. I think early in the season, everyone was talking about South and how good they were going to be. North were down the bottom end. Suddenly, mm. North are playing really well. But you come to a game on the weekend, and it looked like North had turned up a little bit. You know, we're going really well, we're here. Mm. And South are going, no, we're ready to go. And they finish up getting by a couple of points. South are just building some nice continuity with some players. It's been about the first week they haven't had five or six changes listed on their outs list. And when they can start getting some games into guys like Ben Heaslip kicked three goals on the weekend. He's missed some footy with concussion yes, this year. Yeah. Um, Elliot Duncan was a guy they recruited from West Adelaide. He started playing and coming back in as well. So if you can get some of these names going, and there's not a reliance on, obviously, Gibbs isn't there, but, mm. you know, Cantilla's not playing at the minute. Menzies not playing. They're not relying on three or four, they've got different avenues and yeah. you know they're a pretty good footy side and you know they're probably one team that's got enough talent that could get rolling in the second half yeah. of the year. Yeah, yeah, they certainly show that. Hey, let's have a look at the games coming up, mate. Eagles sit in fourth spot, Central's in a ninth spot, down where Central's play. What's your thinking? 
I watched Central's last week and I thought they were quite good. Mm. Um, they, they're really competitive. They're really hard-nosed. They play a lot like Paul Thomas, really hard, really tough. But I think the Eagles will probably have a little bit too much class. I think they'll be able to kick a big enough score um, at Woodville Oval. I think I'd really like the Eagles in that game to get the job done. Justin Hoston makes a difference to the Central District side. He came back and mm. I think he missed about four years. Missed four or five weeks. And yeah, I was speaking to Paul difference. Thomas after that game on the weekend. He said he was coaching from the boundary line with Paul Thomas. And mm. he sort of said that he's played some forward, played some back. And I think that Tomo sort of said that his best foot is going to be in the back line. Yeah. Where he can sort of direct and be a bit more of a manager. And they've got these other guys. And on the weekend when Port had 17 inside 50s in the third quarter, he was the reason why they kept them goalless exactly and right. moving guys around. And he plays a big role for that team and makes a massive difference. I agree. Port and all. Sunday, Alden Oval. Cool. Massive game, I think. The two traditional rivals. It's probably a loser is probably done for the year, I would think. So with Sturt losing last week, it does create an opportunity for one of these two teams. Mm. I just don't see it with Port in terms of... I just don't think they've got blokes that are hungry enough at the minute to get back into that AFL side. They're pretty quiet on the weekend. And Norwood had a good win against the Crows, um, were competitive against North Adelaide. And if they bring their best footy, they could go very close to beating Port on the weekend. Just quickly, mate, Westies and Adelaide? Uh, I'd like, I think the Crows will probably win that off a bye. They'll probably be back close to full strength, I would think. But Westies have been good. They're on the improve. They're getting better every week. But I think the Crows will probably have too much in that yeah. game. Yeah, I don't think Westies are too far away. Always great to catch up with you, Luke. You're right across it, mate. Stay with Got us. Still, mate. plenty to come. <laughs>